you should know that cold water immersion, particularly when the head goes under the water, is far, far more advantageous compared to cryotherapy. The reason for that is it activates the what's called the mammalian dive reflex and tones the vagus nerve. So all the nervous system benefits that you get from cold only happen if you're in cold water with the head underneath. The other thing is that the cold water, you might notice it feels a little bit less comfortable than the cryotherapy chamber because of what's called that hydrostatic pressure of the water against the skin. The cold water is also more effective at eliciting like the fat burn, the shivering response, the, you know, the shift of white fat to brown fat. So if you had to choose something, I'd say water, but since you have the cryotherapy chamber, I'd say keep doing it, but then consider at least once a week, kind of going a little bit longer with the cold water and making sure your head is going under a few times. Well, folks, my guest on today's podcast is actually a guy who pretty much started with nothing, launched a $10 million company over the course of a couple of years, launched another company called IBC Group and took that to nine figures, took another group called NFT Tech Public, and now manages and hosts one of the largest Twitter spaces that's ever existed, millions of listeners per week with guests like Elon Musk and Hunter Biden and Mark Andreessen and Charles Hoskinson and Michael Cohen, a bunch of other top crypto exchange folks, entrepreneurs, and a plethora of other high profile names. He's talked on TEDx. Uh, he's speaking to me today from Dubai. He's heavily in demand when it comes to speaking at tech spaces, but also behind the scenes. He's a pretty prolific biohacker and loves all these cutting edge technologies, health technologies. As a matter of fact, so much that he even has someone who manages a lot of this for him as far as putting together all the cool things that he does to optimize his body. So folks, my guest on today's show is Mario Nafal. Mario Nafal. All of the show notes are going to be at bengreenfieldlife.com slash Mario and uh, that being said, Mario, it's actually it's it's pretty special that I interview somebody and they actually have an assistant with them to help them keep track of all their biohacks. That that's that's pretty impressive, man. Yeah, man. So so two things. Number one, it, it's pretty impressive that the interviewer is also on a walking treadmill while interviewing. Me. So oh. I just want to want to kind of Always. point that out. And second, <laughs> my assistant became my girlfriend and now manages my biohacking as well. So it's like I've got a full package next to me. She makes sure I live forever. And make sure I'm, I've got a companion in life. Dude, if my wife managed my biohacking, I'd probably be dead. She, <laughs> yeah. she, she doesn't track jack squat. <laughs> I'd be, no, I'd be. I'm, uh, not there yet. I'm not there yet, bro. Like that's why. Like yeah. one of the reasons I have a list of the reasons why I don't want to get married. One of them is I've heard that when you get married, uh, things change at times. I've seen enough movies to say you know we used to watch Everybody Loves Raymond. Yeah, I want the person yeah. that's making sure I live forever. It doesn't change the pills or the drips. <laughs> exactly. My my wife is amazing. I don't think she'd ever take advantage of my health insurance or anything like you've just alluded to. But uh, she she's not an organizer or a manager. I'd probably be having lettuce and ketchup for breakfast, and you know my my fitness routine would be something like cleaning the garage. So, anyways, <laughs> though. Um, okay, and, and and what's your what's what's your assistant's name again, Mario? It's it's just to make sure I get this right. J Jennifer. Oh, Jennifer. Jennifer. I called her assistant, your girlfriend, biohacking manager, assistant, whatever, <laughs> Jennifer. Um, so, so Mara, for people, you know, a lot of my listeners uh, and viewers, they're familiar with many people in the health and biohacking spaces, but possibly not so familiar with some of these big folks like you who are doing things like, like hosting massive events on Twitter spaces. And so just as a background, what exactly is it that you do? I don't even quite fully understand it. I've just come across you a few times, seen some of the stuff that you're doing, and thought it would be cool to have you on the show. Yeah, man. So I still don't know what I do, to be honest. Uh, I, I, <laughs> so I started, I used to love building businesses and, and I've always been, you know, I, I don't like the concept of death. It just doesn't make sense to me. Like some, like one second you're here operating in this world and then suddenly you're just gone. Like it just, it just doesn't click in my head. So I, I don't like the concept of death. That's why I'm obsessed with biohacking. But what I do is I started hosting a, a Twitter space, an online show. I used to be on Clubhouse before. About a oh. year ago, it used to be the biggest crypto show. But then now became the biggest show, period. So we've had a lot of big names from Mark Cuban, Bill Ackman, a bunch of senators. Um, and, and, you know, we reach millions of people a week. 
so and I'm, I'm so we have a finance show in the morning. We have a politics show at night. We have a crypto show in the afternoon, seven days a week or five or seven days, depending on the show. And in the works right now, we have an AI show launching in a week or two. And the second one is a uh, biohacking show. Um, I'm partnering oh, wow. with one of the biggest names in the industry. And um, we're, we're in late stage discussions to finalize it. And I'm also partnering with Dr. Drew to do a medical show unrelated to biohacking, more oh, yeah. general medicine, COVID, this type of stuff. Who, which uh, which bio are you allowed to say? Which biohacker you're going to have on for a for your uh, I haven't show? asked for his permission yet, and we haven't signed. Okay. Um, so do you want me to say it and you bleep it out, or just say it afterwards? <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. Uh, I'm sure that I'll stumble <laughs> across it at some point. So when you say Twitter show, like what's a Twitter show? Is that the same as like a Spaces? Yeah, it's a Space. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. And and you you were doing Clubhouse, and then you do this. And how does how does it work? Do you actually just get a person on and then you have a whole bunch of people show up and ask questions or what's the show actually comprised of? Yeah, man. So, so we do, it's pretty insane. Like you remember FTX that collapsed? Yes. That exchange, the crypto exchange. So when that collapsed, we were covering it live. Like I was doing my normal crypto show and we were covering it live. We ended up doing a 20 hour show, then a 15 hour show with like a barely a few hour break uh, to sleep a bit. Um, and when we covered that live, the world was watching. So it kind of showed the value of Twitter spaces where you cover things live. The media was watching. Everything was happening. The whole collapse was being covered live in one place. And then the media would take all the information from that place. Elon jumped on a couple of times. And then since then, we just cover a lot of, we used to cover a lot of live events. Silicon Valley banks collapse, the missile that landed in Poland. And now we cover everything from, from LGBTQ rights to the war in Ukraine to US politics. Today we're doing the debt ceiling. And whenever we cover something, it's always, unbiased and in the middle. So we get both sides coming together and debating, which is pretty interesting because CNN is like, you know, biased one way, Fox News is biased another. So there's no one doing it. We're bringing both sides together and we're doing that. And it's been, uh, it's been an incredible, unexpected, ongoing journey. Well, look, I know we're going to talk about it because you do all these, you know, cool biohacks and life extension technologies. And I know you've worked with uh, David Sinclair, who's a pretty prolific guy in, in the health optimization space himself. But it, it kind of uh, raises the question for me, like how, how do you actually monetize a Twitter space to be able to do something, you know, like if, afford your, your daily hyperbaric chamber or whatever? Yeah, so I have initially, initially the, the spaces weren't making money, at least the non-crypto spaces. And to this day, the biggest one I do every day, the politics and news ones, I've never made a cent out of it. It's just been costing me money. That's because the business funds it, at least for now. The other shows, so the most obvious way to fund it is just advertisers, but it's pretty lame um, and not that exciting. So we have an entire business model behind it. So my company is an incubator. It's an AI and crypto incubator now expanding to just any startup, including tech startups. So what we do is we promote the incubator. We promote the business on the spaces. Um, so that kind of a, a machine in the background, like you do your podcast, you've got a whole machine behind it that allows you to monetize it beyond just advertisers, whether you're getting clients or you're selling products. Um, so it's a similar, similar machine behind it, just scaled very heavily. Um, and then the news and politics ones, we haven't, we, we still haven't, there's many ways to monetize it. And it's, it's fascinating how the multiples are really interesting. But we haven't started monetizing it yet. We are working to take the company public uh, later this year. We're working towards that, um, which means that um, you know liquidity will not be an issue. So we don't really need to make yeah. immediate money. It's more reaching a bigger audience and leveraging it later for for financial gain. Yeah, that makes sense. Where'd you grow up, man? That's obviously not in America. Australia, man. Melbourne. 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 Okay. All right. Gotcha. Aussie. And and <laughs> when when did you migrate out of Melbourne and and come out this way or out to Dubai and tell me about that eight years ago. with Jennifer. Yeah, eight years ago before I met Jennifer, I traveled the world. Jennifer stumbled upon me and, and got stuck in this uh, in this loop of, of what I call life, what many people call craziness. But yeah, I was traveling for eight years, man. Didn't have a home. I was literally homeless for eight years. Spent most of my time in Miami, Europe, um, Marina Del Rey, and, and uh, more recently Dubai. Okay, got it. And what what got you into all this? Like like getting into health, biohacking, etc. Like it's just it's just I get surprised when people ask me this. Now I know you're asking me for an interview, but when people genuinely ask me, I'm like, how can you not? Like yeah, how how can you live? You no, know, it's like it's like someone gets and so I'm using an extreme example just to make a point. But imagine someone getting cancer. It's like hey, why are you getting treatment for this? Like what convinced you to get treatment? I have freaking cancer. 
and you ask me why I'm getting chemotherapy. Um, it's the same yeah. thing here. Like I have a disease called death and you ask me why I'm trying to delay or prevent it. Yeah. Yeah. That, that makes sense. So, so do you think that it's capable for, for humans to achieve some type of immortality through transhumanistic efforts, or at least, uh, significantly extend life or slow the rate of aging above and beyond where we're at right now? I'll give you a stupid answer and Jen will give you a better answer. My stupid answer is, um, I want to try to delay aging for as long as I can until hopefully we get a technology that can reverse it or, or just halt it. That's my goal and then eventually reverse it. That's my goal. I know it sounds very naive, but I'm, I'm hopeful. And Jen, you talked about a study recently that actually shows it's not going to take that long for us. It's not going to take as long as many people make it out to be for us to actually potentially reverse aging. So when you told me this, I got pretty excited. Yeah, oh, so tell me about it, Jennifer. Like yeah, so Odadi Sinclair worked with mice and he was able to actually reverse the age of mice, which was really impressive for me. That's why I believe like we're not that long from reversing biological age. Another study uh, mentioned that we're actually maybe like 12 years away from finding a way to reverse it in humans. Yeah, and that study got me excited, man. Like when I heard that, I'm like, shit, I have a chance. Yeah, yeah. Have you have you seen the um the Rejuvenation Olympics website? Are you familiar with that at all? Is that the one by Brian Johnson? Yeah, yeah. So they're using what's called the Duned In Age Pace Measurement to determine for any given you know let, let's for simplicity say twenty four hour period how many hours of a twenty four hour period or how many days of a week or how many weeks of a year you actually are aging compared to the general population. And so obviously a figure that is lower than one would indicate a slowed rate of aging that, you know, theoretically, and these are what guys like, you know, Brian Johnson, et cetera, are, are trying to achieve could result in almost like reverse aging the closer and closer that number gets to zero. So on this website so now. Below yeah, zero is reverse aging. Yeah, below zero would be like literally like Benjamin Buttoning. But the idea is there's a lot of people, and I think a lot of like prolific, you know, entrepreneurs, people in the tech space like you, et cetera, who have perhaps a little bit more energy or resources to devote to this, who are getting down, you know, I, I don't think anybody's below 0 0.7 right now. But I mean, folks are in like the low 0 0.7s, which if you do the math, that would mean, you know, for a 365 day year, you might only be aging for 260, 270 days out of that year. And so th that'd be interesting for you to start to track some of the stuff you're doing. It's called the Duned In Pace Measurement and companies like um, True Age Diagnostics, they're probably one of the more popular companies that will literally have a have a blood spot test sent to your house and you just do the test. And then you track on a regular basis what your efforts are actually resulting in when it comes to age reversal. Yeah, Jen, Jen uh, just wrote the name. So I'm going to look into it. I heard about it in a as a podcast I like called My First Million, and they interviewed Brian Johnson once. They mentioned in a yeah. podcast a couple of days ago the, 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 the calendar you're talking about, and they have like an, the Olympics thing. And they have Brian Johnson's apparently first. Are you, are you on there or no? Yeah, yeah, well, I interviewed Brian about four weeks ago. Fascinating guy. I mean, <laughs> you know, we, we talk about those of us who are, who are kind of focused on age reversal. I mean, he, he is on the cutting edge, like 120 different supplements each day. And I mean, he's spending like, it sounds like five to six hours a day on this, which to me can become paradoxical. You know, if you're living a long time, but spending all of those years spent cold and hungry and libido -less, you know, hunched up inside some kind of a cryotherapy chamber, or hyperbaric chamber. But, you know, Brian's a nice guy. His, his approach seems reasonable, but he definitely spends a lot of time on it. And yeah, I believe he is at the top of the list there with a low 0 0.7 number. I think I'm about 0.76 or something like that. He and I have very different approaches, though. You know, I have a background as kind of a masochistic endurance and strength athlete who did a lot of damage to my body for like 20 years. And I use a lot more of the biohacking technologies. His approach seems to be more based on fasting, uh, sane amounts of exercise, a very large number of supplements, probably about four times what, what I take, uh, and a lot of tracking and testing and not doing anything unless it's steeped in science. I tend to yeah, have a little right, bit so, more so, of like a, like a guinea pig approach myself. All right. So when you say 120 different supplements, is that different types of supplements or different pills total, including ones he takes three, four of pills? Based on my rough calculation, 
looking on his website, it is actually 120 different compounds, you know, C60, spermidine, urolithin A, NAD, you know, all the way down to like extra virgin olive oil and dark chocolate, which I think it counts as a food, not a supplement, but it's a fascinating approach. And, uh, you know, it actually led me to wanting to ask you before we jump into some of your strategies, you or Jennifer, are you doing anything uh, from a testing or tracking standpoint to kind of see how what you're doing is working? Yeah, we constantly, we do blood tests every three months. That's the first thing we do. And you mentioned true age. We also do that uh, to check if he's actually reversing his biological age or not. And there's okay. also the if, if everything is working. Yeah, there, there's, there, that includes the Sinclair tests. Which now, one? now there's you're one. you're working... You're working with Sinclair. I think you mentioned to me a couple of days ago as we were throwing around some ideas for today's show that you've been working with uh, uh, David Sinclair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and what's that actually look like? He's really good, actually. He monitors everything, like from uh, Mario's glucose levels constantly, the way he sleeps, um, uh, his exercise. So whenever he exercises, we have everything graphed out. We also send him... Uh, like literally everything, everything is supplements, um, like everything, blood tests. So he tracks everything, gives us, uh, gives us his feedback, and then we implement whatever he says. Yeah, After he research, up, of course. He follows up with a soothing voice. Like, it's like, <laughs> so you have, based on your blood test, um, your biological age is 20% more than your um, uh, chronological or whatever actual age which is bad but don't worry yeah. we we'll can solve it. it so I'm like you know what you just gave me the worst news but the way you speak seems like it's an incredible news so thank you very much that's, that's, that's a pretty how good, I would describe pretty good Sinclair thinking. impersonation yeah you're, you're yeah, doing about <laughs> this is bad so, so in terms of what you've actually learned from him or what he's teaching you or what you're implementing and I realize this is kind of a loaded question but we got time I would love to hear what you're actually doing, like what a typical day in the life of Mario or week in the life of Mario looks like when it comes to, to biohacking, age reversal, and just general health optimization. All right. Can you do me a favor though? Yeah. Be direct. Tell me from a scale one to 10, how extreme is it? Like how good is it? The higher, the more happier I'll be, but you have to be honest. Okay. Like, like give, I you, to feedback, be give you feedback on, yeah. on how good your protocol is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Okay. Well, well, I I okay. will, but let but do me a favor. Let's make sure David Sinclair doesn't listen in because if he does, you know, and, and I and I I differ with him on a certain approach, uh, you know. No, he, he so Sin I've only right just started working with Sinclair. <laughs> we just, just started. See, so. I don't, a lot of a lot of his protocol you won't hear it here. Um, yeah. Okay. So if I speak too much, let me know because I, I'm pretty geeky about this, and then Jen will fill the voids where I'm too stupid to explain. Totally. So uh, I'll start with diet. Diet is I used to be vegan. Now I'm pescatarian, um, but really wanting to focus more on vegan. I don't know what Sinclair recommends. Sinclair recommends meat and stuff. I sneaked in lamb and, and grass-fed beef like randomly a week ago, but generally vegan, pescatarian, I have eggs a lot. Um, that's what I eat. I used to have a private chef. No longer do. <laughs> Technically, she stole our money, disappeared. <laughs> that's the truth. But we're looking for a new chef. <laughs> so that's in terms of what I eat. I try to sleep eight hours a day minimum. Okay, okay. So, I so just a second. I'm I'm going to interrupt you. Let's get into Please. let's get into details, dude. Because you know we're long form. We we can we can geek out on this stuff. What what are you doing as All far right. as like a typical breakfast, lunch, dinner, pescatarian type of approach? Um, eighteen hour fast. Uh, I used to fast every day. Been a bit shaky recently since the show, especially since the show. But generally speaking, you know, I eat. I'm I'm not as strict as I was before. I monitor my calories. My weight is steady, but you know, I do eat a lot of eggs, um, don't eat much bread, you know, sweet potatoes, vegetables. I really stopped caring enough about what I eat and that's not right. I'm keeping it healthy though. I'm sticking to healthy, but I'm not really watching all the macros and stuff. I've really fallen back with this. I really got to catch on there. Jen checks But you it. have a team that does it for you, so. Yeah, but they don't warn me. So they calculate my macros, but they don't tell me, Mario, you're eating too much of this, too little of that. So that's probably something I need to fix. Well, well in, in um, Dubai, in Dubai too, it can be a little bit tough. Like, like last time I was in Dubai, you know, I went to a place that had served, they, were, they were serving like burgers and steaks and they were bragging about how the cows were grain fed. But of course, in the U.S., it's the total opposite. You know, they were looking out for the grass fed, grass finished meat. But of yeah. course, the grain fed. I don't eat beef. I don't eat beef. Just chill. Taste better, et cetera. But then when it comes to things like, you know, eggs, vegetable, are you able to get things like pastured eggs, 
organic produce, things of that nature in Dubai? Yeah, the place I eat from, it doesn't say organic and stuff. I probably should start calling them. So you give me notes to take. I already appreciate this. I should check these. These are basics. Um, when I had a private chef, everything was organic, grass-fed, blah, 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 everything. But me losing the chef has been a, a hit. Uh, but I'm going to start working with the chef again so shortly. I'm going, I think we have one coming to the house. So I'll have a private chef again, and I'm very strict on all these things and macros and I have a set menu, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so you're doing more, more of a vegan pescatarian approach. It sounds like also pretty rich on the egg front. You know, the, and of course, one of the issues, Mario, and you, you may have heard this concern raised before, is of course, you know, this idea of muscle-centric medicine and muscle being a sink for things like blood glucose and muscle being a highly advantageous longevity strategy, especially things like, you know, grip strength, how much you can deadlift, you know, your, your overall fast twitch muscle fiber capacity. And of course, many vegans face an uphill battle when it comes to adequate amount of amino acids and protein for things like the, the anabolic approach or enough mTOR activation, things like that. So it sounds like you're getting nature's perfect package protein, in my opinion, in the form of eggs, but are you doing anything else to ensure that you're getting adequate protein, whether from a supplement or, or a food strategy standpoint? You did. He Actually, he just today decided to go back to vegan. I was telling him constantly to go plant-based, okay? And he used to eat like once a week, maybe uh, lamb or maybe add a little bit of chicken, but very rarely. So it wasn't that common. It was mostly plant-based. That was his diet. Because I was worried about his protein yeah. intake, but he just decided to change. Like, let yeah, today. but I'm eating, I'm eating pescatarian <laughs> though, seafood, seafood. I eat a lot of seafood, that's protein and omega, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah, that, that's fantastic. Okay. And, and that's, that's what I tell a lot of, a lot of people who are choosing plant based to at least try to work in some eggs and fish where you can. And then the other thing that's super important, I don't know if you guys have, have given this much thought is the idea of deactivating a lot of plant defense mechanisms. That means like fermentation, soaking, sprouting. It would be like the idea of, for example, instead of having, you know, a salad with with quinoa, you're you're soaking the quinoa overnight or sprouting the quinoa, or instead of doing lots of raw greens, you're instead of doing lots of shoots and sprouts, or with nuts, for example, soaked and sprouted nuts instead of regular seeds and nuts. I find that a lot of people doing the plant-based diet, they'll sometimes have digestive issues, you know, bloating, gas, you know, sometimes constipation, things like that, because the plant defense mechanisms haven't been deactivated. Is that something you guys think about or, or you've talked with David much about or anything along those lines? She's, so she just took notes. Whether, <laughs> if you see me or her look down or look away, the we're taking notes. Taking notes. <laughs> yeah. So we don't look at that, yeah? Well, by, by the no, way, by the way, if people watch the video funny. version of this podcast, they'll often see me with a with like a pen and a green pad. That's what I do while I'm I talking. I'm I'm pretty old school. I'll, I'll take notes as I'm talking to the people I'm interviewing to remind me of things I might forget to ask, or you know, little things you say that I want to note down. So I'm the same way. I'm I'm constantly taking notes during the whole show. So uh, so, anyways, uh, go go ahead. Are you guys kind of like Let's doing anything routine. special right, with so the plants? I'm uh, no, we don't do anything special with the plants, but I can, so we, we're going to start that. Um, do you want me to go back to the routine? Yeah, but there's one other thing I'll throw in there. What you guys, and, and this is a total like fox guarding the hen house type of tip for you, because I actually own a supplements company and our most popular supplement, particularly for people who eat plant-based is called essential amino acids. They're a vegan source of amino acids. A couple of scoops of them is like the equivalent of eating an entire steak's worth of protein, but uh, they're, they're our most popular product by far, like 10x. If you, uh, if you, um, you know, WhatsApp me or email me or whatever after the show, I want to send a couple bottles out your way just so you can kind of assess the difference in how you feel. Cause I haven't had a single plant based person not start on to like 20, 30 grams of essential amino acids per day and report like amazing sleep, recovery, performance, et cetera. So later on, I'll, I'll, I'll get you a couple bottles. But, uh, anyways, go ahead and go back into your routine. I'm in, man. I'm in. We're going to geek out like crazy on the biohacking show, I swear. Oh, yeah. You're going to love the cohort as well that we're going to have. Um, all right. So um, another thing is I use sleep. Sleep is extremely important to me. I've got my whoop here. I used to have an aura ring, but I lost it every week. Um, the, so I used to never have an alarm. Like I, I don't do meetings and, and I used to always sleep. No one wakes me up, but now I have a freaking show. So now my sleeping is all over the place, but I still try to get at least an average of eight hours of sleep a day. I know that's 
extremely important. And try to make sure it's deep sleep. I sleep in a cold room, have a comfortable mattress, Tempure mattress, comfortable pillow, um, and I have a, an eye mask, sleep mask. Now sleeping from you know the right time, like 7 p.m. till 3 a.m., whatever, 4 a.m., the, the ideal time to sleep, I don't because my show is U.S. hours and I'm not in the U.S., uh, so that makes it difficult. You also uh, wear glasses, the true dark glasses, to regulate for the circadian yeah. rhythm. That, that's a really good idea, especially if you've kind of got these shifts in circadian rhythmicity that might not be ideal based on the time of your show and the U.S. time zones. The light mitigation is a huge piece. So you're doing the the blue light blocking glasses and the sleep mask. Are you doing anything else in like the cold or the or the light or even like the the EMF mitigation department when it comes to sleep? Yeah. So he has also a cooling mattress. I do. Yeah. Oh. Sure. <laughs> you're sleeping on a cooling <laughs> yeah. mattress and you don't even know it. But I have a cooling but, mattress as well. <laughs> good thing somebody's in charge. What what are you what are you doing as far as the cooling mattress goes? The budget. Oh, the bed jet. Yeah, yeah. So it's like a, it's like a fan. It goes under the covers, you know, the bed jet. Oh, yeah. And it cools yeah, the, the, under the, the bed jet. Yeah. yeah, that's a yeah, different yeah, yeah. technology than the, because there's the one that circulates the cold water, which apparently they're going out of business. I just found out. I think it's uh, Sleep Me. And so I think Eight Sleep is the other solution for running cold water under your body while you sleep. But a lot of people don't realize you could do the same thing with air, which is what the bed jet does. And the reason I know this is because, um, I now sleep in a Faraday canopy, you guys, which is like, it's, it's a silver lined fabric. I got it from this company called Shielded Healing. So at night, the last thing I do when my wife and I climb into bed is I press a little button on the remote control and around the entire big princess poster bed, the entire bed becomes enveloped in this silver lined cage. I can't send a text message. I can't make a phone call. There's zero signal whatsoever. It's like you're inside this old ancient primal cave but of course the problem with that is it gets warm and even though I, I now sleep on one of these cooling mattresses initially the research that I did into it was on the bed jet to be able to use air to kind of like blow some cool air up into that Faraday cage now I just use the the cooling water with a little oscillating fan that blows in but that bed jet's actually pretty cool technology especially for people who don't want to mess around with the cold water version yeah, so what's that thing you use? The <laughs> oh, so okay, so so it's called a Faraday canopy. And we actually had so Brian Hoyer is a guy who travels all over the country. And I think sometimes he'll go to other areas of the world. He shows up at your house with all these different crazy meters. He walks through your whole house and he measures things like cell phone radiation and cell tower exposure, Wi-Fi radiation, dirty electricity what your dishwasher is doing or your refrigerator, the areas that are best in terms of like where to set the beds in your house and what direction they should face based on electricity. And then amongst other things, including things like dirty electricity filters in each room of the house or kill switches in the bedroom that will kill all electricity. He has a Faraday painting where you can paint a certain area of the house that will block all electricity from coming into that area of the house. And then he also has this fabric that is a, a shielding fabric. It's like a Faraday fabric. Many people, for example, guys who are concerned about sperm quality will put their phone inside like a protective case. This is a similar idea, except you're literally putting your entire bed into a protective case. My sleep when I'm at home, because I use the Aura uh, instead of the Whoop. I just find the Aura to be easier for me is like up in the mid 90s as far as my sleep quality. And I think a big part of it is that during the third of my life where I'm arguably wanting the most nervous system repair and recovery, I'm completely shut off from any form of, of ionizing radiation, which is actually, it, it's a pretty cool little sleep hack. And, and obviously there's other things you can do. Like you mentioned, you get rid of the light and you, and you adjust the temperature, but I think that one of the most underrated aspects of improving your sleep score, especially for guys like you and I who are like blogging, podcasting, Twitter spaces around technology all day, is to basically completely nuke all technology from the bedroom and just surround yourself in this like protective canopy during the entire night of sleep. That's so cool. Yeah, I'm going to get that canopy thing. Could yeah. you do it? You can't stay without your no, phone. No, I'll be on my phone when I want to sleep, put the phone away, press yeah. the button. 
Oh. Yeah, it's amazing. You just put the phone in, in airplane mode. And by the way, you know, not, not that I want to dominate the conversation here, but I, I just love talking about this kind of stuff. When I travel, I obviously don't have that cage, Mario and Jennifer, but there's another company called No Choice. And No Choice makes like a track suit and a jogging suit that's entirely lined with this same silver fabric that blocks all electricity. So for example, if I'm on an airplane, what I do is in my bag, I pack one of these jogging suits. And as soon as I go through security, because if you go through the security screeners, you'll look like a ghost. They'll freak out because they can't see it with the x-ray scanners or anything. And then you got to get patted down, take it to the special room and everything. But as soon as I go through security, I pull this suit on and I can go onto an airplane and not get exposed to all the Wi-Fi, everybody's cell phones, because half the people don't put their phone in airplane mode anyway, so you're getting bombarded by all these cell phones trying to seek a signal. But then the cool thing is that same suit, if you do get to a hotel room and you feel like you want to protect yourself a little bit while you sleep, you can actually just put that suit on top of your on top of your bedspread or on top of your top sheet and kind of have your own like go with you shielded healing type of environment. That's so cool. I'm going to get yeah. that for sure. That's a good idea. Yeah, I wrote it down. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, um, back back to sleep. Are you are you taking any like uh, supplements or, or nutritional strategies for sleep yeah. at all? Yeah, Jen's getting it now. There's one I started taking recently. I'm out of it. This so is actually it. Sinclair gave you this yeah, one. Yeah, so Sinclair gave me this one. It's called Sweet Dreams by Ser- Serena Loves. Okay. It's got, it's got, what does it have? We've got Kilitol. Manitol, cellulose, vegetable starch, and the rest is mm. natural flavor, citric acid. Oh, okay. So it's like, it sounds like maybe like a prebiotic fiber type of approach to sleep optimization. Yeah. Like, like for, for the gut. Are there, do, you, do you take anything that would be like, um, you know, like CBD or like inhibitory neurotransmitters or the type of things that would make your body relax or, or fall asleep faster? I tend to be okay. Like, how long? How long should I? How long should it take me to fall asleep? I fall asleep. I watch videos, shorts, like YouTube shorts, like which is like TikTok. I watch shorts for about um, um, you know 30, 45 minutes, like which chillaxes my brain, and then I fall asleep pretty well. I used to have insomnia a couple of years ago, but yeah. I just watch those and I fall asleep. I could probably sleep even earlier if I stop watching earlier. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's what I watch. And in terms of taking CBD, yeah, you know, don't don't bring CBD to Dubai. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that actually, I've heard that. You don't want to be on the bottom of your shoe if you don't want to get thrown in, <laughs> thrown in prison. So that, that's a good point. Um, you know, even if you can't use CBD, uh, I'm, I'm a huge fan, especially for guys like you and I who travel a lot, of melatonin. Uh, there's, there's one guy in Sarasota, Florida, yeah. who literally makes these super duper high dose melatonin bottles and melatonin suppositories, meaning you literally like put them up your butt. And it's like 300 milligrams of slow release melatonin. When I travel or when I've been traveling extensively, like if I were to come over to Dubai and do this interview with you guys, I do high dose melatonin for the first couple of days. And they say that for every hour that you cross when traveling, it takes a full day for your body's circadian rhythm to realign and normalize. And I find that when I use this melatonin, like I'll be flying to London in a week, I can feel fantastic as though I'm in my normal time zone within just a couple of days, even if I'm crossing eight, nine, 10 time zones. So melatonin is a, is a fantastic strategy. But to reply to your question, Mario, about sleep latency, uh, ideally, in, in a proper sleep environment, it should be two to five minutes from the time that you climb into bed and close your eyes to the time that you actually fall asleep. And that's totally achievable. Unfortunately, it does require, rather than things like videos and things like that in the bed, usually sounds. And there are like wraparound sleep headphones. Like there's one company called Sleep Phones. I do. I do. I have, you, a, I have a speaker, on. man. I have a speaker. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Man, man. I have a speaker and I put a fan sound. Oh, that's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I think honestly, boring books on the bedside, you know, like uh, self-improvement books or like, you know, essay books or even fiction is way better than videos. If you do want to decrease your sleep latency. You know, just because just of the technology is like as soon as your hand picks up that phone, it's thinking even subconsciously about work, about, you know, communication, et cetera. And that's another reason I like that that Faraday cage around the bed because you just can't even turn the phone on if you wanted to. Or you could, but it doesn't have a signal. So anyways, though, the, I'm, I'm glad that yeah, you're prioritizing I'm, sleep. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm going to start using my phone less because I think I can fall asleep easier. 
I just enjoy, like for me, it's just not going to sleep directly. I enjoy watching a bit of videos. It's kind of my chillaxing time after, because I don't take breaks during the day. So it's like a yeah. bit of a break, chillaxing, having fun, and then sleeping. It's a bit of both. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, I like that. Have you, have you heard of the Muse headband uh, or the Muse app? It's like a, uh, yeah, yeah, it, yeah. My, it's a my, headband that, yeah, yeah. yeah. It'll do neurofeedback and, and track your brain waves and then sometimes play different um, sounds or breath work. But they have, you know, related back to this idea, Mario, of like what you look at or listen to helping you to fall asleep. They have the most boring stories on the freaking face of the planet built into the Muse app. And you put on your, your headphones and you play a story. And literally, it's like some dude walking along the beach for 20 miles, stopping off and like having a nice cup of chamomile tea on the, as he stares out over the veranda and the waves crash and he hears, dude, like you, you can't listen to one of those stories for longer than 10 minutes without literally like waking up the next morning and not knowing how the story ended or what happened. So that's also kind of a strategy. Somebody, <laughs> or Aura has the same thing. Aura has built in super boring sleep stories. And it sounds, it sounds like the worst thing to listen to is you fall asleep, but you actually do fall asleep very quickly especially if you tend to have racing thoughts and somebody else's voice kind of lulls you to sleep because there are these stories that you're kind of sort of interested in but not really and then you just fall asleep uh, i'm gonna try it out. i'm gonna get the muse i'm actually gonna introduce you to someone i live with a with a good friend of mine very very close friend who also runs the biggest incubator in web3 like a big business guy who invests like crazy and he has a company called brain alive which is a competitor oh. as far as i understand it's a competitor to muse Oh. Um, I think you like chatting to him, so I'll, I'll just tell him to come up to my room uh, after this interview. Oh, yeah, that'd be super cool. I, I, I love stuff like that. I uh, I always take a, a nap every day after lunch and my, my post-lunch nap because I, I personally only sleep about six, six and a half hours a night, but I always do a nap after lunch to catch up. And uh, napping is my time to experiment with all the relaxation devices like a you know like the brain tap or the muse or some haptic device or supplement or whatever so i literally use use post lunch to guinea pig that kind of stuff so that'd be that'd be super interesting you know um yeah i'll, I'll, I'll yeah i'll connect you with them obviously when people think biohacking mario and jennifer they think technologies right like hyperbaric chambers and cryotherapy or vibration platforms or you know, different light sound stimulation machines or whatever. I think it'd be cool to hear a little bit about what type of technologies that you're using or that, that Sinclair is coaching you with or anything else. Like what, what are some of the cool biohacking technologies that you're using right now? Yeah, so so as a clinic I go to here in Dubai every day. So I go seven days a week. I spend about four hours there. And what I do is um, I do sauna for an hour, uh, infrared sauna. Four hours? Uh, Wow. No, four hours total, not just a sauna. Sauna's okay. one hour. <laughs> are you are you like working okay. during this time, or is this just like four hours, just shut off to the world, just working? Like man, on no you. way. I'll, I, can, I cannot not work, man. I'll just get depressed. So okay. I work during the sauna. I jump on calls all the time. Okay. Uh, sometimes I eat inside as well. Jenny will tell you a funny story. Once she walked in on me in the sauna, and he was completely naked, and he got <laughs> delivered shrimps and seafood inside the sauna. So I see him oh. naked with all of this food. Okay. <laughs> and I was like, right. it was stinky as Okay. <laughs> and I, I didn't know it was stinky. So I was just chilling. <laughs> we're going to rabbit hole again here real quick because I have to tell you that, you know, the, the sauna can be great, especially if it's like a low EMF sauna or an infrared sauna. But the fact that your tissues are being heated in a sauna means any form of technology, including a phone in the sauna, can be way worse for you in terms of the radiation from the phone than when you're at room temperature and not in that heated environment. So I, I would actually heavily advise against having your phone in the sauna. And then the other thing is one of the benefits for longevity from an infrared sauna, and I, I'm fully self-conscious that I feel like I'm lecturing at you right now, but that's... No, whatever, I love it, bro. Whatever. I love this shit. So, so one of, one of the things that happens in the sauna is mitophagy, or like cleanup of the mitochondria and autophagy, which is cellular cleanup. When you have elevated triglycerides, elevated blood sugar, calories coming in, or the production of so-called incretin hormones, which are the hormones responsible for digestion, cellular autophagy and cellular mitophagy gets completely shut off. So all of the longevity and detoxification benefits of a sauna are negated by either A, EMF, B, consuming calories in the sauna, or both. So the best thing to do before a sauna would be to figure out a way to get the body temperature up without calories. So when I'm going into a sauna, I'll do like black pepper tea, coffee, caffeine, uh, you know, sometimes like a nicotine lossage, anything. Coffee? 
Uh, no, no calories because bulletproof coffee is good, but there's like, you know, 200, 300 calories in that. So just, you know, no calories. My sauna is always fasted, but with some type of central nervous system stimulant like caffeine, green tea, uh, nicotine, you know, bitter melon extract, anything that will increase the body temperature without you needing to consume calories. Cause then you get the most, best of both worlds. You get the cellular cleanup because the metabolism is elevated, but the metabolism isn't elevated because you're digesting food and consuming calories. It's elevated because you put some things into it that enhance the effects of sauna. I should send you an article and a podcast I have on my website about all the supplements and things that you can do before cold to enhance the effects of cold and all the things you can do before heat to enhance the effects of heat. But definitely technology and food are not not two of them. Uh, but nonetheless, I want to hear more <laughs> about the, I want to hear more about these four hour forays into the biohacking facility and what else you're doing while you're there. All right, so the other thing I do is once a week I do a cold plunge as well. Sauna, cold plunge. Today I did it. Sauna, cold plunge, okay? Okay. Once a week is enough for the cold plunge? Oh, you know, it's it's tricky because it, how, it depends I on do how long. I do cryo every day, by the way. Yeah, I do how long and how cold. Day, 140. Okay, that, that's um, pretty good. So you're getting brief forays into the cold. And then is this other session that you're doing, the water session, longer? No. I do the water session once a week. I go in those, the cold water, the cold plunge, it's about four degrees Celsius okay. um, for about three minutes, twice okay. during the sauna, two to three okay. times. Yeah, I that, don't go that, all the way and look, I've do enough, but I go up to about here. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's not bad. I mean, hot, cold contrast is different than the cryotherapy because you're getting the shift in the lymph flow and the blood fluid and kind of this natural cleanup for the body. The... The thing is, a couple of things to realize is that most of the, like, like the autophagy and longevity enhancing benefits of cold kick in when you're cold for a longer period of time, like anywhere from six up to, you know, usually you cut things off around 18, 19 minutes because that's when hypothermia risk is set no in. No way. But, uh, listen, man. Yeah. I'm barely, man, man. I'm <laughs> I know, barely you're, surviving I, three minutes. I, I can see on the video, you're a lean guy. So I get it. I'm, I'm lean too. And I, I struggle with the cold. But I think the best strategy for cold oh, is really once a week, skinny. once a week, a longer session. Mine was actually this morning. So I was I was in the cold plunge. Mine is at about 37 degrees Fahrenheit. I forget what that comes out to Celsius. But I was in there for 10 minutes. Right, And I'll only do that length of period of time where I'm actually shivering when I get out once per week. And then shorter, more frequent cold sessions like you're doing with the cryotherapy sprinkled throughout the rest of the week is adequate, but you should know that cold water immersion, particularly when the head goes under the water, is far, far more advantageous compared to cryotherapy. The reason for that is it activates the what's called the mammalian dive reflex and tones the vagus nerve. So all the nervous system benefits that you get from cold only happen if you're in cold water with the head underneath. The other thing is that the cold water, you might notice it feels a little bit less comfortable than the cryotherapy chamber because of what's called that hydrostatic pressure of the water against the skin. The cold water is also more effective at eliciting like the fat burn, the shivering response, the, you know, the shift of white fat to brown fat. So if you had to choose something, I'd say water. But since you have the cryotherapy chamber, I'd say keep doing it, but then consider at least once a week kind of going a little bit longer with the cold water and making sure your head is going under a few times. All right. So, 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 so first, thanks for ruining my night. Second, <laughs> so I do, so I need, so it's four degrees Celsius. Yours is two. Mine is double. And like, I'm skinny, man. So I'm, I'm really yeah. skinny. I'm working on gym. We'll get to that in a bit. But based on what you're saying, I need to do it once a week for longer. So you're saying what, four minutes? Oh, yeah. if you do once a week, you want it to be a shivering induced thermogenesis. For most people who are pretty lean, it's a little longer than that. You know, for me, it's around eight to 10 minutes. For you, it might be six to eight minutes, but I push yourself, you know, and there are, what I like is um, there are really cool apps now that actually have breathwork sessions in them designed to do while you're in the cold. I think one of the best ones out there is called Other Shit. Instead of Mothership, it's called Other Shit. And there's like 10 sessions in there that range from two minutes up to, I think, eight to 10 minutes in length. And they literally coach you through breath work while you're in the cold. And dude, it makes it go by 
way faster and eases the transition quite a bit for the longer cold sessions. I'm I'm too busy to screaming, man, and I'm not over exaggerating. I'm not joking. <laughs> I scream. Oh, no, don't stay calm. Minutes. Use it um, for stress resilience training. Just just stay calm. <laughs> I, I know if if you can manage a Twitter Bro. space with celebrities and millions of people, you can totally breathe your way through 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 an ice tub. You just got to practice. All right, as you say. But I, for me, it's survival. I genuinely think I'm getting frostbites every time. Um, yeah. All right. So we do cryotherapy. I do cryotherapy 140 degrees Celsius uh, every day, that one, for three minutes. I've been doing it every day for a long time. Uh, let me tell you how much it is Fahrenheit. In Fahrenheit, this is 284 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. Minus. That's, that's a pretty good temperature. So that, that's like a dry sauna, not an infrared sauna, right? Yeah. Yeah, are you doing a, full body are you doing red red light therapy at a different time? Yep, I do red light therapy afterwards for thirty Good. minutes. Good. I do PIMF, PEMF, PEMF, PIMF. Yeah, for thirty minutes. Yeah, I do, what, what's that look like? I the PMF? Are you using like a mat or a pad or a coil or something like that? A bed. I sit on a bed that's oh. mainly from the waist up. And I start yeah. to put a pad behind my lower back just to kind of yeah. put a bit of focus there so that I have a bit of pain there sometimes. Yeah, that's fantastic. Just, just in case that went over our listener's head, is pulse electromagnetic field therapy. It basically opens and closes cell membranes. So it flushes waste out of cells. It'll cause less calcium to be in the cells. So things like low back pain or, or other spasms will tend to disappear. I'm, I'm a huge fan, Mario. I do it every morning. You know, every morning I get up and I'll do like 10, 15 minutes of foam rolling and deep tissue work and stretching. I do a lot of that while I'm on the PEMF mat. And then two times a month, I get a three hour massage and I do it on top of a massage table that's plugged into the PEMF mat. So I get full body PEMF for like six hours a month, just laying there, which is fantastic. I mean, you feel like a, like a new human being if you ever use PEMF for like two, three hours. All right. So I do hyperbaric chamber uh, for an hour. Seven days a week. Okay, got it. Got it. Now, and then part, I do AI. Pa- Go ahead. Well, I was going to ask you. Um, both the both the hyperbaric and the PMF they respond really well. Kind of like a central nervous system stimulant is good before the sauna to increase the body heat. Anything that increases blood flow is really great to pair with hyperbaric or PMF. That could be anything from like taking a nitric oxide capsule to popping a Viagra. Uh, to using arginine or citrulline, anything that kind of flushes the uh, the uh, the the cardiovascular system. Niacin would be another example. Those are kind of like turkey and cranberries when it comes to combining them with HBOT and or PEMF. So that's another thing you could stack in there. Yeah, I've just uh, Jen is writing it down. Niacin. What else? There's a few options. The top ones would be niacin, like high dose niacin. Arginine, citrulline, a lot of these things you'd also find in pre-workout boosters because they increase blood flow. Uh, Viagra, you know, or anything that has sildenafil or tadalafil, Cialis, Viagra, things like that. Or uh, literally there are companies that make nitric oxide lozenges and nitric oxide capsules like Conroy or uh, Dr. Nathan Bryan has a real good suite of nitric oxide products. Some of them are even transdermal. You can smear them on the body. But anything like that, it's kind of like a like a vasodilator for the entire body, and it'll enhance the effects of the PMF uh, or the hyperbaric. All right, I wrote that down. So I do the hyperbaric after the after the PIMF and the uh, sorry, I do the sauna after the hyperbaric and PIMF. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Yep. He usually okay. takes uh, instead of niacin and amman. Yeah, NMN isn't bad. You don't get quite as much of a flush from NMN. And if you're looking, I mean, I love NAD as an age reversal and mitochondrial uh, and, and DNA protectant as well. But I think the best form out there right now is uh, a form of NAD that's called NAD3. Tony Robbins talked about it in his book, Life Force. And I talked with Tony and Peter Diamandis about it on a podcast. And later, a company called uh, Biostack Labs came out with a really, really good form of NAD3. So that's what I use for oral supplementation. And then in the same way that I travel with those high-dose melatonin suppositories, I also travel with NAD patches. There's a company called Ion Layer, and I slap one of those on uh, right before I head to the airport to hop on any long-haul flights. 
or on any day that I'm sleep deprived because NAD is great for sleep deprivation. And so what I'll do is a few times a month, like a higher dose patch, occasionally an IV, and then the oral supplementation. But for the oral form, Jennifer, you asked about NMN. I think NAD3 is better than NR, NMN, or NAD, unless you have a nudge, nudge, wink, wink relationship with David, and he can get you the NAD. I don't think it's NAD powder. I think it's technically NR powder. His powder is really good, but I don't think it's available commercially. All right. Um, so the hyperbaric chamber we discussed, um, and then what do I do after that? There's the um, the gym. So I do AI gym. I start doing it every day, which there's three, four different machines. You probably don't remember them. There's, you do? Yeah, there's the bike. Call it the bike. Yeah, the bike. They just go fast for like quick sprints um, with a with an oxygen um, restraining thing. You put an and oxygen yeah. mask. And the yeah. cooling pads. Oh, well. this is this is this one. Yeah. Yeah, there's another one where you do like it's like a, a it's like a vest. It's called a vest. So you sit like this. Yeah. And you go like this. I know. Oh, I, have, I, have, I have I have one at my gym. I love that thing. I use it three times a week. Yeah. With cold compressing here and here. Yeah. And on the feet. Yeah, and that's fantastic. Under your bum, like you and under my bum, yeah. And you you do the uh, and, you do the exercise with oxygen therapy, like the oxygen while you're doing the Vasper. Yeah. I do the oxygen with the bike. Okay, got it. Yeah, either either one works. That's fine. I do mine with the Vasper. I have the uh, one called the Live O2 that sits right next to the Vasper. And so you have a switch and you can do pure oxygen or hypoxia. And so you kind of like switch back and forth throughout the workout. It's fantastic. I do both. Okay, got it. Amazing. Um, and, th- and then I do the... Uh, the um, Resistance gym. Resistance training. With, like it's AI powered. So it's like it knows your strength and it that goes against your strength. It's not... Oh, manual. Is, is it the uh, is it the ARX? I oh, think so. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. so. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's it's great. It's like one single set to failure, and the harder you push against it, the harder it kind of pushes back against you. It's got yeah, like a exactly. two horsepower that's engine in it. Yeah, that's that. So when I'm when I travel, I do a lot of body weight, blood flow restriction training, calisthenics, walking, etc. But at home, my two primary exercise modalities are very similar to yours: the Vasper. And the uh, the ARX fit, which is like an AI powered device similar to what you just described. So those are fantastic for strength and cardio. Yeah, we have pulling, pulling, yep. pushing legs, upper body, ropes, yep. everything, all of it AI powered. Yeah, yeah, it's probably a very similar device. You know, you just do a few exercises. You're just doing one set as hard as you can to failure. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, so that's I do perfect. that every day, man. Seven days a week. I started wow. doing it a couple of months ago. No, the gym. You don't do that every day. Yeah, yeah. every day now. What does happen? Uh, I is usually I like meant to take a day off. No, I meant to take according to James one day off. It, it depends how old you are. Like if you're over forty, two or three days of these. You know, I'm forty one now, and so I find that I have now three days a week, and all those three days are, are sauna, you know, cold, uh, uh, walking, stretching, foam rolling, and maybe a little bit of pickleball or tennis, and then the other four days are Vasper, ARX, strength training. So yeah, you could probably get by with a day of, of really smartly programmed recovery and still hit weights and cardio most days, as long as it's not excessive. I, I actually think that consistency and frequency, especially for busy guys like you, kind of trumps, you know, massive, huge, long two-hour weight training workouts, you know. Oh, yeah, I do pressure therapy, detox compression. I do it a couple of times a week. What do What's you think? That? Is that enough for upper body and lower body? What's detox compression therapy? Pressure therapy. Oh, or lymphatic is- drainage. Is is that like the like the boots and the arm sleeves that compress air yeah, and yeah, release? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, those are wonderful. Yeah, I I have one of those actually set up next to my PMF unit, and if I'm reading a book or something, we'll pull on those beats. Yeah, that or those. those I do it every day. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can totally do that every day. I mean, you you could kind of you know kill two birds with one stone and and work while you're in those things. You know, and I'll sometimes do that with a book or a laptop. So yeah, those are fantastic. The the company over here in the U.S. That's the leading company for that is called, um, well, it was called Normatech. They were just purchased by a company called Hyper Ice, uh, but it's the same thing. They have arm sleeves and leg sleeves that I think a lot of my listeners have probably heard of these before. They compress your limbs from the distal to the proximal joint and kind of move blood back towards the heart. And your legs just feel light as a feather after you get out of those things. Yeah, I just wrote it down um, to make sure I do it every day. 
You and do the meditation chair, you do yoga, stretching, I, I, Yeah, I don't, I do the Theragun. I don't do the meditation chair, which I should. And I do stretching, uh, assisted stretching a couple of times a week, two, three what, times a week. What's the meditation yoga chair? I don't do. So, because he never gets a break, they have like a chair that he puts headphones, it vibrates a bit. Oh. And he listens like to some nice story, et cetera, just like to Walking turn off on the everything. river or something like that. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. I, th I think uh, there's actually one of those over here. I'm thinking about getting on the podcast because I was at a medical facility down in Florida. You know, I actually did a ketamine therapy session on it, which was pretty pretty game changing to combine ketamine with meditation and this chair. But it, but it, uh, you've probably been in those chairs like at the airport and you sit in them and they give you a massage. This does full chair vibration, extremely intense, like your entire body is shaking and trembling, but it does it in cue to the music. And then you're wearing a pair of headphones that tells you when to breathe in and when to breathe out. It's called a shift wave. That's, that's, that's the that's one it. he does. That's oh. the one he does. That's oh my gosh. Right. Yeah. Is it, is it, is it the shift wave chair? Do you know? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think okay. so. I remember the logo on oh. the, on the mask oh, on the wow. face. Yeah, those, you know, I haven't even done a podcast on it yet and haven't talked about that thing much on the podcast yet because I was actually uh, hoping to establish some kind of a relationship with them first. But yeah, that thing is, it, it's crazy. It's like a massage chair on steroids with breath work and meditation and music all combined. Should I do like it? I, oh, I think as far, like if you're a busy guy and it sounds like you are with a tendency towards like racing thoughts, ruminating, having a hard time shutting the brain off, there's something about introducing that haptic vibratory sensation to the breath work and the meditation you're already doing that eases the transition into just kind of shutting the brain off. Uh, obviously, like I mentioned, uh, the first time I uh -huh. did it, I also had an intramuscular injection of ketamine. So that was, my brain was definitely turned off, but I'm actually, uh, I'm actually in the process of learning a lot more about that vibration chair. So that's fantastic. You have access to one. Yeah, done. All right. Um, yeah, I have access to that place has it. Um, you also do NAC drips. Yeah, and I, I do NAC drips. Mm -hmm. Yeah, N acetylcysteine. Okay. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah. Anything else? Do you, ever, do you ever do much in the realm of like stem cell injections or exosomes or anything like that? No, we really want to do stem cell injections. We didn't start yet, but we re we, we're really keen on those. Yeah. There, there's one doctor over there. You, know, you got to be careful. You want to make sure that you know, somebody has access to clean stem cells and is often combining them with exosomes and they're injecting them into the joints. You want to make sure they're using like ultrasound to make sure that the digital imaging is there. But there's one guy over there. Um, his last name is Khan, I think, K-H-A-N, Adil Khan. And I think he has a clinic in Dubai. Uh, and he's the guy, I believe, that treats a lot of the royal family and a lot of the celebs over there with stem cells. So Adil Khan, would be a guy to look into for the stem cell piece because obviously What's you want to first be, name? you want to be careful. I think DM it's a deal. I've got him in WhatsApp here. It's I think it's A D E E L. Um, let me double check to make sure. But yeah, he would be the guy in Dubai particularly for stem. So yeah, Deal Khan A D E E L K H A N. Was so he, he on the Bio Institute clinic in Dubai? Do you no, know? No, no. But I haven't been in Dubai for like three years. What what, what is it? Okay, no, because we were really interested uh, in pursuing stem cells there. And I know, as far as I know, it's the only clinic in Dubai that does this. Okay, that might be his place. I'd, I'd look it up. But, That's you know, it. some of these places fly under the radar. So you might just want to look up his name. Or you guys can always, I can connect you guys on WhatsApp later on if you want. Um, because, yeah, I mean, obviously stem cells are a pretty significant part of an age reversal protocol. If you've got access to the right ones and a lot of the things you're doing, like the PEMF, the red light therapy, et cetera, is perfect to pair with stem cell treatments because it helps those young cells survive. I did want to tell you guys one thing that's interesting. I learned this from a biologist over here in the States named Dr. Gary Brecca, or actually, he's actually not a doctor, he's a biologist, Gary Brecca. And he has a protocol called the superhuman protocol. It's kind of similar to what you're already doing. It starts with PEMF, which like I mentioned, opens and closes the cell membranes and kind of activates the cells. Step two out of three is exercise with oxygen therapy like you're already doing, but then you save the red light until after you've done the PEMF and the oxygen therapy because at that point, the cells are in a high metabolically active state 
full of oxygen. And when the photons of light hit the cell, it produces a lot more ATP than it would normally. So as far as the arrangement or the order, if you were going to go or if one of our listeners was going to go do a session similar to what you guys are describing, you could actually, in priority of order, do first PEMF and then second, your exercise with oxygen therapy, and then third, the red light. And, w- and what I tell people who can't afford or don't have access to a lot of that stuff, the the primal equivalent is go outside for a walk barefoot, grounding, and then do a breathwork session, and then go out and lay in the sunlight for like 20 minutes. So you can kind of, you know, you can do the, the primal ancestral version or the modern biohacking version, but you actually feel like a million bucks after doing that. Um, so do I do the oxygen chamber before the red light? Or yeah, matter? yeah, you do. You do the PEMF, then the oxygen, then the red light. And exercise. So oxygen is exercise after oxygen, yeah, or with oxygen. Okay. Yeah. Now I mean, talking about the oxygen chamber itself. The hyperbaric. Chamber. Hyperbaric. Oh, the hyperbaric. No, that's different because hyper. Yeah, hyperbaric. You could do it as a part of this. Uh, so you'd either do PEMF, hyperbaric, red light in that order, or PEMF exercise with oxygen and or hyperbaric and then red light in that order and then when do i do the cryo preferably the cryo would be either at the very beginning of everything to induce that adrenaline norepinephrine response or at the end to cool the body's temperature but not too much uh or both you know start and end with the cold i should throw the caveat in there though for that longer cold session a lot of people kind of have the impression that you're not supposed to do cold after workout at all because it it excessively blunts the body's inflammatory response and limits the type of gains that you get, such as you know satellite cell proliferation or mitochondrial biogenesis. But you have to be cold for a long time for that to happen. So the only time you wouldn't want to do cold right after workout, Mario, would be that longer cold water immersion session I recommended to you. That's the one that you wouldn't want to do after workout. All the rest of these shorter cryotherapy sessions, ideally at the beginning to wake up the body and charge it up. And then if you can, also at the end to cool the body's temperature. And and how about the sauna? Do I do this uh, uh, in the middle somewhere or? Most of the research on the performance and red blood cell production capabilities of a sauna treatment involve doing the sauna after you've exercised. So in an ideal scenario, you'd, you'd kind of like rehydrate after your exercise session and go in the sauna after that. So red light or sauna after exercise? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Exactly. So, so, um, so oh, go ahead. No, no. I was going to ask you, like, based on what I've told you so far, be brutally honest. How, how, how good is it? It's pretty, it's pretty good. There's a few little mild variations in the order of exercises that we talked about. And possibly the need for a little bit of recovery thrown in there, like a day that's just focused on like sauna, ice, cold, walking, foam rolling, massage, things like that. Uh, just as you, as you age, you'll probably find six days a week or it, it's just very difficult to pull off. But ultimately, it's a pretty good protocol. I would say, honestly, the main red flag for me of everything that you've just described is I think your sleep habits and sleep environment might be able to be optimized a little bit better based on some of the stuff we talked about. But I mean, you're, you're pretty privileged in that you have access to this, you know, facility. What, what's the name? Of, is this just all your own stuff or is this like a private facility that you go to? It's a private facility that, okay. that I go to. It's called, uh, by formation, by formation. They have a place, formation. two okay. places in Dubai, okay. a place in Singapore York. and one and you one in New York. Okay. Yeah. I have a lot of listeners who are, who are in many of those locations might be interested in this place, but yeah, you have access to that place and you're using a lot of the things that you, that you should be using for it. So the other thing I would definitely bear in mind on this pescatarian route that you're going, like I mentioned, is just fermentation, soaking and sprouting. And you can tell your chef this as well to deactivate a lot of those plant defense mechanisms combined with a pretty, pretty good use of something like either a a vegan protein powder or essential amino acids or both. So you're really maintaining adequate levels of protein. Mm-hmm. A lot of people think that's just for muscle. But again, for a guy like you, you know, the neurotransmitters in the brain are a big part of that too. And even though we're, you know, we're, we're coming up on time here in a little bit, I did want to ask you that speaking of neurotransmitters, because a lot of guys in like the tech space, um, you know, entrepreneurs, et cetera, 
they're into things like nootropics and smart drugs, you know, like maybe modafinil or, you know, microdosing with psilocybin, which I would imagine probably isn't a thing in Dubai or, you know, some kind of like done for you, you know, nootropic or, or brain enhancing blend. Are you into any of that type of stuff, like things that you would take to, to enhance your mental output? Lion's Mane, Jen just told me, but that's it. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, Lion's Mane is fantastic. That's, that's, that, that's a good one. Um, but I'm pretty... I'm pretty productive as is. I just need to be better at focusing. But do you think I should look into new tropics? I don't know what's legal or not in Dubai. Oh. So I have to see what I'm, I'm able to do. But... Oh, man. I mean, there, there are literally hundreds Forget about of legality. Them. Forget about legality because yeah. most of your audience is not in Dubai. I would say as far as legality and efficacy, if, if I were going to talk about things that aren't generally known by the public as far, you know, a lot of people talk about like on its alpha brain or quality of mind or all these like done for you brain supplements you can get off Amazon there are more fringe companies uh, like Nootropics Depot or Limitless Life Nootropics. And I'll link to these in the show notes if people want to dig into them. I'll just go to bengreenfieldlife.com slash Mario. But of, of the ones out there that I think more people who are really pushing themselves on a daily basis should know about, there's a relatively new one called Cognance, C-O-G-N-A-N-C-E. It puts you into a hyper productive focused and creative mode for a solid 10 to 12 hours without a lot of the side effects like the sleep side effects or the lack of personality side effects of something like modafinil right which was the the drug that the movie you know limitless was based off of that one's called cognance the way it works is actually very similar to psilocybin but without the psychedelic effects it triggers some of the similar receptors so Cognance is one. If you were to get that, definitely take slightly higher dose fish oil when you take it because your brain starts working so fast, you actually burn through what's called your choline levels pretty quickly. But that thing combined with about four to six grams of fish oil is one of my new favorites. And then the other one is a peptide. And I know that Limitless Life Nootropics has this, and I like it because even though most peptides you need to inject, this one is a nasal spray. It's called C-Max slash C-Lank, S-E-M-A-X slash S-E-L-A-N-K. About two to three sprays of that is not only something that a lot of people use for like depression and anxiety and mood, but it has a really profound cognitive enhancing effect that lasts about four to six hours. And technically it could be combined with the Cognats, but those two would probably be two that aren't really that popular out there, but that you know, I've been recommending to a few of my kind of like higher end entrepreneurs and execs to use during their busier days. And they're, they're definite game changers. All right, man, I wrote them all down. Look at the notes. Look at this. This is <laughs> you, just mine. You might have more notes than me. <laughs> mine is too bright. Um, <laughs> hey, I, I did want to ask you guys, because Mario, you're pretty connected. <laughs> And you talk with a lot of smart people, like on Twitter spaces, et cetera. And from what I understand, you even do a little bit of investing, I think. It, is there anything that you're looking at in like the health, fitness, biohacking space coming down the pipeline that you think is super interesting or is going to be popular or that a lot of people don't know about, but you've kind of got your eyes on? Anything specific? Like for me, I'm, I'm a more business person. So I'm looking at media. So I, I think the media side of this is fast. Like one thing it's going to be interesting for you. I've talked to a lot of people about this, you know, investors and people that are, that are wealthy. And the, I'm just going to use the word conversion rate. The conversion rate, and I'm not selling anything. The conversion rate is ridiculous. They all want to learn more. Without me even trying to sell, I like just tell them that I do this, this, and that. Please. Bring me in. Like my, my friend and business partner that I'll introduce you to in a bit, the, the Brain Alive one that competes with that thing for the head you talked about earlier. What was it called? The one for sleep? Neuralink. Neuro, Neuralink. Oh, no, 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 Muse. 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 Yeah. Um, so he came with me to buy hacking today and he's more into meditation and that side of things, the, the, the spiritual side of life. Um, so yeah, I, that, this is one observation that doesn't answer your question directly. In terms of particular products, I think the, the whole AI gym, because it's such a, a gym is something that everyone, um, you know, relates to. It's not getting going down that, that, you know, extreme end that we, we were talking about. Um, I, I think it's, it's, it's a very le- relatable and a very low hanging fruit for any business minded person. And then what formation is doing, look, I want to, I want to get equity in them because I love what they're doing. I think the concept is great. And I think 
like there's three industries in the world that I'm really in, fascinated by and I'm, I'm really bullish on. Web three, crypto, number one. Number two is AI. And number three is biohacking or anti-aging, which I think it hasn't reached its hype phase yet, whereas AI and crypto have. So yeah. that's, um, I hope that answers your question. I don't know if there's anything specific it, it, you can think it of. It does. It does. That gives... Pay attention to. No, I'm just... Oh, go ahead, Jennifer. People should treat aging as a disease. Yeah. That's Sinclair's no, whole idea, that, right? In my opinion, I think people should look more at aging as a disease. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Some, something that that's is beautiful. actually manageable and preventable. Look, I don't think death is preventable. And actually, you know, I'm a Christian, so I kind of like want to die so I can go to heaven. But at the same time, you know, my goal is to maximize my lifespan and my health span as much as possible during whatever time I'm blessed with here on this planet so I can help as many people as possible. And, and it's actually interesting what you described, Mario, Web3, AI, and biohacking. I don't think those three have fully merged to the capability that they, that they are, uh, that, that they're capable of. Um, not to overuse the word like capable, but basically, you know, Web3 and the ability to be able to interact virtually with a trainer or, you know, or in some type of a virtual environment. AI to be able to very precisely do things like measure and quantify what you're doing and then deliver you customized nutrition and fitness programs based on that. And then, of course, biohacking to use things like you're using uh, at this at this bioformation labs, like the minimal effective dose of exercise using the best technologies. You know, I could see folks getting to a point where they could step into a facility like you've just described. And let's say maybe they don't have four hours. Maybe they've got one hour. You You could have well, I could put it this way, a far, far more effective workout than most people are getting right now in their average hour long workout at the typical gym with a personal trainer. And, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm all about like going outside and swinging a tennis racket and picking up heavy rocks and, you know, running through the trees and doing some pull ups from tree branches. But the technology side of things is pretty interesting, too, especially when it comes to folks who are busy, who want the minimal effective dose of exercise and who want to use every technology tool at their disposal to achieve that you know yeah man uh, I'm, I'm i'm with you 100 percent. and i would i'm gonna introduce you i have to introduce you to gorov i think you guys will click uh the one that has so the company is brain alive it's a it's like ai with web3 so it's got a token um it's it's an ai product and it's it's a competitor to a lot of these users and other other competitors. So I think you'd love it. Do you want me do you want me to bring him up now? See if he's available for a quick two minute chat. I think you guys will click. Don't bring him up now because I have a hard stop in like five, and we got to close out the podcast. But let's let tell you I'll what. I'll connect you on WhatsApp. I'll yeah, connect you on WhatsApp. Do, do a WhatsApp or an email intro, and then you know what you said about conversion rates is also super interesting because I'm shocked at the number. I mean, I had three conversations this week with guys who are paying like physicians or biohackers up to $30,000 a month to oversee their programs. And I've seen the programs they're getting in there. They're not that great, but nonetheless, it's, it's shocking to me the number of like wealthy entrepreneurs who are spending a lot of time and money on this stuff and, and getting taken advantage of. So I want to make sure I put that out there to folks, like just because somebody says they're like a, you know, world famous, you know, biohacker, a doctor or something, always get a, get a second opinion if you can. Cause you know, I've seen people with super messed up programs who are literally emptying out their wallet every month. Yeah. Somebody who just knows that they, whatever, you know, made a bunch of money in Bitcoin or something. So proceed with caution. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I haven't had, I haven't experienced those cause luckily I have Jen, um, and she obsesses with, with your contents and Claire's contact content and, and others. DM, Peter Diamandis, I think. Peter. Yeah, yeah, Peter's Peter, great too. Uh, uh, whole, like, she's she's like obsessed with you guys. Like yeah. she, when I said to her, "You want to jump on a call with, with Ben Greenfield?" She's like, "I can't do it. No, <laughs> Ben Greenfield, no." So that's how you, how geeked out she is. You did great, Jennifer. You guys are like Batman and Robin. So I, I love it. You, you, it looks like you make a good <laughs> Thank team. You. Um, you know, like I mentioned, we're running short yeah. on time, but you know, Mario, I would imagine a lot of people might want to check out some of these spaces that you do, particularly you know, for my listening audience. I know a lot of them are probably in, into some of the economic and political type of discussions that you're having. I know they'll be interested in some of these biohacking discussions. Well, we'll be doing biohacking ones. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Yeah. That they'll definitely be interested in that. So tell me the best way for people to find out more about those or see a schedule or whatever. Yeah, just Google my name, Mario Nawful, N-A-W-F-A-L, uh, and follow me on Twitter because whenever I start a space, you'll get notified. So okay. Mario Nawful, 
And um, yeah, like we'll be doing these live shows for biohacking, even though it's not a mass audience like politics or, or finance or even crypto or AI. Um, it's one that I think is too important and one I want to, you know, from a business side, I want to dominate the media early on like we did in all the other industries. Yeah, yeah. And I think I'm already following you on, on Twitter and definitely folks, give Mario a follow. I'll link to it in the show notes at bengreenfieldlife.com slash Mario, all of his accounts, Instagram, Twitter, et cetera. But I'll, I'll definitely be hopping in and joining on for a session once you launch one of those biohacking spaces because it's uh, it's something I just I love to see. I used to pop randomly into a few of them when they used to be on Clubhouse, but I, I haven't gotten that involved on Twitter spaces. So you've motivated me now. I'll, I'll jump into one at some point. Yeah, I've just subscribed to you on Twitter as well. I can see you've got subscriptions. So I'm a subscriber cool. of yours. Cool. Awesome. Well, you guys, this has been a fascinating discussion. I really enjoyed it. It was just fun to, to geek out. And obviously, we all love this stuff. And hopefully, we, hopefully, uh, if you're listening in right now to this podcast, you got a few tips. But if you want to leave your own comments, questions, feedback, etc. for me or for Mario or for Jennifer, go to bengreenfieldlife.com slash Mario. And that's where you'll find all the goodies in the show notes. Um, so Mario and Jennifer, thank you so much for doing this and taking the time and, uh, and stopping your busy day in Dubai to join me. Thank Appreciate it, man. Thank us. you, Ben. Awesome. Awesome. All right, folks. Well, I'm Ben Greenfield. Sign out with Mario, Nafal, and Jennifer. I don't even know your last name, Jennifer. Uh, I don't know. Ask, ask Mario. Maybe it'll be Nafal pretty soon. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, what, what's your last name or are you allowed to say it? Zaham. Z-A-H-M. Z-A-H-M. Okay, cool. And next time I'm over there in Dubai, I'll look you guys up. We'll, we'll, we'll connect at some point. So um, in the meantime, folks, uh, benggreenfieldlife.com slash Mario for the show notes. Thanks for joining. <laughs>